Let's go, girls. Blimey, once you get reading on genetic engineering, it's like a black hole. A super interesting black hole. Super interesting black hole. News. Last time, I spoke about CRISPR and how we can use it to change DNA. Check out my previous video if you want a catch up. Today, I'm going to discuss two main things. An example of a disease CRISPR could be used against and one thing that might still hold CRISPR back, as well as mentioning a couple of other cool future possibilities that I don't have time to fully run through in this video. So let's tuck in. Firstly, using CRISPR against a disease, in this case, muscular dystrophy. Our muscles are a bit like me during my undergraduate degree, constantly under stress. As we move, exercise, even breathe, our muscles are feeling the strain. Because of this, muscles tear, but they typically repair quite quickly. However, in muscular dystrophy, the muscles are weaker, so don't repair as well, and that leads to them wasting away. There are different types of muscular dystrophy, but here I'm going to focus in on Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Duchenne's is caused by mutations in a gene for a protein called dystrophin. Science word, dystrophin. Mutated dystrophin makes these muscle cells weaker. This is because dystrophin normally acts like a shock absorber, and so when it's mutated, muscles feel every movement that much more. Eventually, patients become paralyzed and often die of heart failure before the age of 25. Because remember, your heart is a muscle too. But, there goes the CRISPR horn. Experiments have been carried out in mice that have the muscular dystrophy mutation. Basically, the CRISPR system is injected directly into the muscles of the mice or into the bloodstream. A chunk of the mutated dystrophin gene gets cut out in an attempt to restore the gene to a healthier state. These mice that were treated with CRISPR showed an increase in healthy dystrophin in their cells, an increase in muscle strength, and so some recovery from the disease. Yeah! Now I've decided that every time I talk about a limit of CRISPR, I'm going to put on my limit hat. But there is. Which brings me on to the second course of this CRISPR meal. CRISPR's kryptonite unreliability. If you're sending Cas9, which is effectively a tiny little pair of scissors into a cell, even if you tell it where to go, sometimes it's going to get lost on the way. This can lead to off-target effects, with certain parts of DNA that we didn't want to change getting changed by accident. Now, you might be thinking that, well, if Cas9 isn't going to do its job right, we should go all Ellen Sugar on it. You're fired. But, to be fair to Cas9 actually, getting it to find one particular bit of DNA is a pretty big ask. Let me put this into some context. Imagine our Earth, and imagine the equator that runs along the middle of it, and how wide that equator is. Now, imagine 30 Earths all next to each other in a line, all the equators side by side, like one massive mega equator. Then, somewhere along this mega equator, I put a Toblerone bar. A single Toblerone. Then I say to you, all right then, here's a Google map image of where that Toblerone is. Go and find it. Off you pop. Me asking you to find this Toblerone along a line of 30 Earths is the same as me asking Cas9 to find that one particular bit of DNA. No wonder Cas9 makes a few mistakes. Although, because it does make these mistakes, we can't fully rely on it as a medicine yet. Despite this though, the possibility for use in certain treatments is still there. And so, I wanted to end on one final section. The things I didn't have time to talk about but want to mention because they're cool F. 1. CRISPR versus cancer. Genetic engineering could be used to send your own immune system after a cancer. 2. CRISPR versus malaria. We could edit the DNA of mosquitoes to get rid of malaria. 3. Curing infertility in men. Yep. And that's all I have time for. Next time, I'm going to mention a big fear that surrounds CRISPR, and that's that it could lead to a future where we design our own children. There is seriously so much to say on this topic and if you have any questions feel free to ask 
or if you want me to do another video on any topics I've kind of glossed over, request it and it is my duty as an educator to make it happen. Feel free to subscribe if you want or follow me on Twitter or just be my friend. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and remember, keep asking questions. And here's a summary of the stuff I've already summarised. Give it a pause and give it a read. Hi there, hi. Uh, beauty blogging tips from me, Sophie Ward. If you want to look, get that uh, Alan Sugar look. Just cover your face in like dry shampoo and it makes all the hairs on your cheeks stick out and as I discovered today, it tastes like really bad. <laughs> So yeah, thanks, like and subscribe, thanks, bye.